Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Daily IoT. The hockey, the start of the hockey season is fast approaching. My Washington Capitals are not showing up in the preseason, but that's all right because it's just the preseason, hopefully not an indicator of the regular season. Otherwise, it's going to be a very long season. So we got to get this thing wrapped up before the season starts, which is in a matter of days. So hopefully we can have something working when official puck drop happens later this week. I think it's like Thursday. So what we're going to do today, so we've covered the NHL API, we've got our screen displaying um, stats that we can send over the internet uh, from the particle cloud, and now it's time to put all the pieces together. Uh, we've got our e-paper display, we've got using the NHL API, we're going to get to low power, but we're going to start today on the low sant piece of the project. And so uh, again, we have the display, we have the API, and we have all this stuff, particles in here somewhere. I need to like stick my particle sticker there. Um, but low sant is gonna be how we glue all of this stuff together. And so what we would normally do in a project like this is we need to get data out of the API and get it down to a microcontroller. The microcontroller could go straight to the NHL API, but there's a lot of overhead there. There's a lot of data to parse out and that can be a little bit heavy here. And so what sometimes you would do is you'd write like a cloud service here in the middle that takes that and digests it and send it down. Um, but that's extra code that you would need to write. We are going to try and do all of this through LoSant workflows and the, um, the different offerings that we have in the LoSant platform. And so I have an idea for how this is going to work. I've been playing with it with a little bit. And I I think all of this is going to come together directly within LoSant, which would be really, really cool. And so we'll see. We'll see if we can make it work that way. Uh, so what we're going to do today, though, is a, a very simple end to end. And that is we're going to see if we can get LoSant to query the NHL API for the player that we care about. We're going to we can choose any player. We're going to settle on Marc-Andre Fleury. That's uh, what we've been working with here, um, celebrating the expansion team of the Golden Vegas Knights. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see if from LoSant we can query the NHL API, get Fleury's stats, current stats, and send them down to the display as our first step um, along the path to completion here. Um, that's not going to be our final solution as you'll see when we talk about low power techniques, but let's see if we can get today uh, low sant querying from the NHL API, sending stats down to the display. To get started, you're going to need a low sant account, which you can sign up for free. There's a free tier that you can use, and I won't show you all the steps to do that. It's, it's pretty straightforward. If you have any problems, uh, hit me up with a comment. I can help you through that. But once you have set up your account, you're going to you can come into your application dashboard here. If you just do applications, view all applications. I have some already. Yours would probably be empty if you've never used LoSant before. And to get started, we're just going to click on new application. We're going to call this IoT Hockey Puck. It doesn't have to be a hockey puck. I just call it IoT Hockey. I did IoT Hockey research. You can see I was playing around there. Uh, I'm going to stick with my motto of not using descriptions because I'm a terrible person and hit create application. And so we have our application and from the application you can add devices and workflows and data tables and things like that. Because we're using a particle photon, we are gonna come over and set up an integration. And we do this by coming over to the integrations tab, clicking add integration, and we'll call this the photon integration. And the integration type is particle first class support for Particle within the LoSant platform, which is really cool. And then you can put in your access token here. I will do that. Uh, I won't include that on screen here, so I don't just give that to everybody. And then you can also restrict this integration to devices, products, and things like that. As you notice, they're all optional, so we don't need to worry about that. So let me add my access token, and then I'm gonna create uh, hit create integration down here. So now that we have our photon integration, we, we have that set up. It's time to build a workflow. So we're going to come over here to workflows and do create workflow. We'll call this query stat API. 
and no description because I'm a rebel. And that's going to bring you here to the workflow editor, which if you've used something like node red before, it's a lot like that. It's this concept of coming over to the toolbox, grabbing nodes, and then you can connect them uh, together and things like that. Over here on the left, you have all of your triggers and experience and logic and data endpoints and outputs. And all a workflow is, is a combination of connecting these together to create a certain outcome. In our case, we want to query the NHL stats API, grab Marc-Andre Fleury's current stats, and then push them down to our particle device for display. All of that can be completely handled here as a workflow without writing any code. Let me show you how we can do that. To start a workflow, you need some sort of trigger. And you can see the whole list here. I'm not gonna go through what all of these are, but what we're gonna start with because we're testing this is a virtual button. And what a virtual button does, as you can see here, it says is useful for testing workflows. And basically that's gonna give us, like it says, a virtual button to press to trigger our workflow to test it while we're working on it. And what will happen is when we push that button, we want it to query the NHL stats API. And to do that, we just come down on our toolbox here on the side to the data section, and we grab the HTTP node. We drop it on the canvas here, and you can see right away it gives you the options of how to do this. We're gonna change the label. I found that giving these descriptive names really helps with the visualization of the workflow once it's put together. And so we'll call this query NHL stats API so that we know that what that's doing. And then you can see that all of the standard HTTP methods are supported, get, post, put, patch, delete. In this case, it's just a get. And what's really cool that I'm not gonna show yet is this idea of templating where you can, an input to this node can actually provide the URL that you want the node to get. Or you can just do something like HTTP foo.com or google.com. In our case, we know the endpoint for Marc-Andre Fleury stats. I showed that in a previous episode. And so I'm just gonna grab that URL and paste it in here. So just paste that in there. It's this big long stat. Again, I covered that in a previous episode on how to get that. And so that's it. That's all we have. You can add request headers if you want. We don't have any of that. And then it says optionally, you can store the response at a path in the current payload. And so let's do that. Let's call this, let's store it in data.rawstats. And then all we do is when we, we, we connect the nodes together like this. So when we push the virtual button, it will query the NHL stats. Now, what I recommend when you're building these workflows is heavily use the debug output node. And so at this point, we should have the response from the NHL query, but we need to manipulate that to get just the pieces of data out that we want. And a great way to inspect that so you know what it looks like is to just slap a debug node here at the end and have it spit it out. And so what we will do is deploy workflow. The workflow will not be active until you deploy it. And what you have to be careful of, especially if you're using like a trackpad like I do, sometimes when I'm trying to scroll around, I will accidentally uh, trigger the back navigation, uh, which will, uh, then I have to redo the workflow. And so um, deploy the workflow, make sure it's saved. Um, and now we can push our virtual button and we should get debug output. To see the debug output, we come over here to the right side. There's a couple of options here. We wanna to go to the debug tab. And now when we hit our virtual button, we should see output from the stats API. So let's see what happens. There we go. And you remember we stored this in the raw stats, data.rawstats. So let's expand that. And you can see that the body of the response came back. And here we go, NHL. If you recall from the previous episode, the, the response is quite uh, nested. So you've got to go down to people, zero. And then you've got Marc-Andre Fleury and you have to come down to his stats, but you can see that's, we've, we've got his uh, player profile. And then now here under stats, again, you gotta drill way down here, but this is why it's nice to have the debug because you can see how much we have to drill down to be able to get to finally this stat node, which has all the information we need. Wins 18, goals average against, or uh, goals against average is 3.02. And what was the other one? Save percentage. 
uh, 0.909. So those are exactly what we want from the NHL API. Now we need to grab them out of here and push them down to the particle photon. We could do that with one more node here, and that's the particle output, and drill down and grab those. But what I like to do is, let's, let's show you another one of these nodes in LOSAN to show you the power of the platform uh, to where we can get this data into a much more uh, accessible form. And so uh, I'm gonna slide my debug node over here. And I'm gonna come down and grab from the, uh, this is the logic section of the toolbox, there's a mutate node. So I'm gonna grab mutate. And this will allow us to manipulate the payload that comes from the query NHL stats HTTP node. And what we want to do at this point is grab the stats out of the payload response from the, the raw API query and put it into a, a, a nicer format for us to use. And so instead of having you watch me set up this mutate, uh, let me go ahead and, and type that in and then I will talk about it. So what I selected was, I, I set this to be a copy value. You can see from the rules, you can do a remove a value, move a value, copy a value. I selected copy a value, and then it asked for a source path and a destination path. The source path is that really long drill down, data, raw stats, people, stats, splits, all the way down to get Flurry's actual stats. And then the destination path I just have set to data.flurry. So once we pass out of this node, all of his stats will just be under data.flurry. And so uh, let me give that a, a quick name here. We'll say get flurry stats. And let's change our debug. Instead of coming out of there, let's, let's move it down so we get the debug out of here to see if that's doing just what we think it is. And then I'm gonna hit deploy workflow again. Uh, you notice that when this comes up, I've, I don't have a lot of screen real estate. It kind of obscures the view. If you just click anywhere on the canvas, that will go away and you can see your actual workflow here. And so uh, let's go ahead and click our virtual button. I'm still on the debug tab over here. I, I cleared it out so that there's no previous logs in there. And if I hit the button, let's see what we get. Okay, so now you can see I still have the raw stats from the NHL call, but I also now have this flurry node, which 23 keys, which are all of the stats that we care about. And so perfect, that's just what we wanted to see. Now, all we need to do is send these stats down to our particle photon. So we come back over to our toolbox. Sorry, the node palette, not using the right terms here. And we've got this particle call. And if you remember, we set up in our code, let's uh, come back over to it here. We had our update track stat, which was our particle cloud enabled function. And we, we wired up with this call here. This was all in a previous episode if you've, if you've missed it. And so from the particle cloud, we can call this function as update stat and pass it, again, a comma delimited, uh, a delimited string of Flurry's stats. And so, now we just have to call that. So we come down here into our uh, integration. We'll say send to photon, call it. And the integration is that photon integration that we set up uh, a little bit earlier in the episode. And then it says, what's the function name that you want to call? In our case, it's update stat. And we can give it a device ID so that it will um, go directly to our device or limit the call to our device. Um, so I, I recommend putting that in if you're just playing with a project yourself or if you have a bunch of these that you want to send this, uh, call this on, uh, you don't have to restrict it to a specific device. You can also restrict it via product, um, but we're not going to mess with that right now. And so now we need to pass it the stats. And so we have this string template. Again, we can pass it the string that we manually enter, or we can use this idea of templating, which we are going to use. And to do that, you can see we use this double bracket notation. We're gonna do data.flurry. Um, you can come over here to see, I've got the debug open, so I can kind of use it as a guide. I wanna do data.flurry. Um, wins, goals against average, and save percentage. Now they need to be in a particular order. That's what I talked about in a previous episode. So it's GAA, save percentage, and then wins. So we'll say flurry, um, goal against average. 
So we'll say goal, spell it right. Goal against average. So that's the GAA. Then we need a comma. And then we'll just do the same thing. Data.flurry.save percentage. One more comma. And then the last one is data.flurry.wins. And that should be all of the data that we need to send. And so you can see this power of using templates of we, we got that we massage the data into the format that we wanted. And now it's just a matter of using a template to pass it back out to our device. And so we don't need to worry about uh, restoring the result back in the in in the payload because this is going to be the end of our workflow. There's nothing after it. And so that is it. We're just going to connect this up so that after we get those stats, we'll send it to the debug like we have been before, but we'll also do a photon call. And so what we're going to do now is I'm going to plug in my uh, particle photon and see if some magic happens. Now, if you remember from a previous episode, the default of the screen is to blank out the stats when it turns off. So this is just that background bitmap that I have, and it waits for the function to be called to update it with stats. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna press my virtual button. Oh, sorry, I need to deploy the workflow first. Don't forget, always deploy the workflow. And once I've done that, I will push the virtual button and we should see the stats flow down. If we've done everything correctly, uh, we should see something. So here we go, pushed. And nothing happened. I forgot, I, I blew past this a little bit. In the send a photon, I said we weren't gonna mess with the device name or ID or the product, but we, we do need to supply one of these so it will, the, the API call can target the device correctly. And so you, you don't have to use your device ID. You can use the name, which in my case is microcast photon. So I will save that deploy the workflow and from the top let's click on our virtual button and see if we get stats this time okay look at that that is amazing so just I, I can't stress enough the power of this of how I mean just these nodes if we take away this debug node four nodes within the low sant platform and we have grabbed information from the NHL API mutated a little bit and then sent it down to a function call on our particle photon to display on our screen. So really, really cool stuff. All right, that does it for today's episode. As you can see, we've got a real solid base uh, so far with LOSAN. Just a very simple um, workflow that queries that NHL API for a fixed player, grabs the stats, and then just turns around and sends them right down to the display. Now, that's not very power efficient. The photon's gotta be running all the time, waiting for pushes from the LOSAN cloud. And so we can do better than that. We're gonna continue playing around in low sand to see how we can get this you know a little bit more mature and meet this goal that we have here with low power tech but i think it's a great first start and technically it's it achieves the you know the concept of the project and so that's really exciting but let's take it a little bit further episodes coming up later this week uh, we're going to see what else we can accomplish with the low sand platform i appreciate everybody watching um, question of the day this is a question that I've done before but I'd like to do again and that's uh, if you've made it this far in the video I love you but I want to know how I can make the show better what are some things that you want to see more of or things that you want to see less of uh, tell me how I can make the show better for you thanks so much for watching daily IOT the show where together we're learning how to make the internet of things one day at a time